The verdict is death, a unanimous decision by the 12 jurors, but no finality. There's a lengthy appeals process. We know that there are going to be appeals about whether the death qualified nature of this jury, that is to say everybody who served had to be able to impose a death penalty, uh, but the majority of Bostonians are against the death penalty. So was this a trial uh, by a jury that wasn't capable of reflecting the conscience of the community? Johar Sarnay is likely to be moved far away from the scene of his crimes in Boston, most likely to the federal penitentiary at Terry Hot, Indiana, with other death row inmates. This was the same jury that determined Sarnaya guilty in the first phase of the trial, but the second sentencing phase was more complex. It involved a weighing of aggravating factors such as the killing of children, premeditation, and showing no remorse versus mitigating factors. The influence of Sarnaya's older brother, Tamerlan, who was killed by police, a troubled upbringing. The jurors will have been unanimous in finding each of the aggravating factors proven. A division would have meant a life sentence, the burden of proof being on the prosecution. Mitigating arguments would also be considered, but they would not have to be unanimous on each one. Sarnaya's lawyers admitted from the get-go that their client did it. It was the only way they felt they could argue for a life sentence. But it was not to be. Three people died and more than 260 were injured in the April 2013 bombings. Jurors sat through 27 days of testimony in both phases of the trial and listened to more than 150 witnesses. After deliberating, the 12 men and women of the jury weighed all the factors and finally agreed that 21-year-old Johar Sarnaya should pay with his life for his crimes. Gabriel Ozondo, Al Jazeera, New York.